Good evening and good day, whatever time you are is there. This time I would like to start uh, uploading the series teaching of our bishop with regards to covenant. Because it's very important today. That, uh, it's just like right now when church buildings are shut and uh, we can no longer use church building you know what matters what really matters is our relationship with god so let's dig deep in to our uh, relationship with god which is the covenant covenant is our serious relationship with god Hallelujah. <clears throat> this is a serious teaching by Bishop Moses Archongalo. And uh, I hope uh, we can upload more because uh, we cannot do it all at one time. When God purposed to create man, see, he has a plan. God's plan and purpose. When God purposed to create man, God made his covenant with, uh, with man. You can see it you see in Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So this is very, very important that when he planned, he planned perfect for us. Let's go to the connected uh, verse that is very directly connected here is, you see in Genesis chapter one, verse 26, man was not yet there. They're still in a meeting. They're talking about creating man. And then he said, then God said, let us make man. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all creatures that move along the ground. Now, take note. It is only man whom God decided to create in his likeness, in, in his image. There is what they call like father, like son. He did not say that to animals. No. That means he purposely and planned and intended to create man to be his son, to be his child to create his kingdom here on earth. And he planned to them to be eternal. Okay? And so let us make man in our image and in our likeness. See? And so if you go further, he said, and so God created man. And so how? Chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2 is more detailed of the creation of man. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the breath of life. Now you might be wondering, when did the relationship start? Relationship starts when there is connection, strong connection. It says this in verse 7, And the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What is the breath of life? No less than the Spirit of God. In the Nicene Creed, we always recite that. The breath of life, the Holy Spirit. See? So it says there, He breathed into His nostril, the breath, meaning the Holy Spirit practically came into man. So God came into man, and there is now interpresence between God and man. 
that starts the power of connection the identity that's why when the spirit of god came the image and likeness of god came into man his his image his characteristic his good his holy his righteous he's good all the time so man is originally good see now so that's the start of the covenant now, covenant what is covenant another word of covenant is commitment It's a relationship that is serious. There's a commitment. It is a contract. That's why we always see it in a marriage contract. Is a serious relationship. When two couple go and decide to get married and go to the altar and exchange their vows and say, do, <coughs> do you receive? There is a contract lifetime it is an agreement it is a testament it is a pledge it is a vow it is a promise so it's really serious so that, that is what covenant means when god purposed to create man god we just put it down. God made his covenant with man. Another word of covenant is agreement or contract. Yeah, see, it says it is much like a contract also with the, an employment contract or agreement between an employer and an employee, applicant employee. Now, you know, when, uh, when the employer make a contract, the applicant doesn't have a part in the making of the contract. It's all the, 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 the employer. And the applicant, the employee, just have to sign if he accepts or not. So they don't have the, the, the part in the making of the covenant. The same thing with God. See? So the employee only has to agree and sign the contract to be employed it is also like a lease agreement where all the terms have been set by the owner of the property and the leasee or a tenant has to agree and sign the contract to be able to use or occupy the property remember everything is god's but the same thing with the lord when god made the covenant between man and God, man has no part in the making. Of course, uh, God is uh, wise. Mm. Hallelujah. God already set the terms of his covenant with man. See, it says there, in the same way, God already set all the terms of his covenant with man and had no part in the making and the conditions thereof. God's covenant reveals his and expresses his will on man because he planned to be perfect. Napakaganda. The terms of all the commandments and laws uh, and precepts and ordinances or instruction in his word, the Bible. That's the terms of this covenant. That's why we call this, this is the covenant. Our covenant with God is the Bible. The word, the Bible, the word of God. You know why? Because it's in Isaiah chapter 55 verse uh, uh, 8 to 9. God's ways are higher. It says there, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. As heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God did not allow man to have a part in the making of the covenant because man is limited. His thoughts are higher. Sometimes, many times we don't understand. But he has a perfect plan in us. The Bible, our covenant, our testament. The Bible is full of provisions saying, these are the verses, these are the decrees and laws you must be careful to follow. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 1. And also in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Or teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Man has no choice but to obey the covenant of God. Remember Adam and Eve. They disobeyed and broke the covenant. And they were cut off from God. And were cast out of the garden of God to suffer the curse. See? Now, this is all the relationship. Let's focus on relationship because it's by your relationship your intimacy and how close you are with God that will be able to save you, that will give you a passes in going to heaven because heaven has to be inherited by those who are related with God. And there can be no covenant if there is no relationship. This is all that matters. See? We can inherit heaven because of our relationship with God. But you see, many people don't care. They th even if you call yourself Christian, you know, there's a, what they call automatic Christian. It's because you are born in a Christian family and you are Christian. No. You need to have a personal relationship with the Lord. You have to, have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in your heart and start your, to build up your relationship and your communication. No communication, no relation. That's why prayer is the evidence of our relationship with God. Communication. Yeah. So this is where it is focused on relationship. But you know what? When God made his covenant with us, God is serious. He is so devoted to us. He loves us so much. He is so devoted to us. Oh, let me give you some examples of strong commitments. People who are they're very popular, uh, very popular uh, verses that are being quoted with regards to commitment, to covenant, to serious relationship. One is in Ruth. Chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. Well, this is a very popular, but it, it describes the strong commitment. And these are being quoted during marriage. And remember, Ruth is a Gentile. He's from Moab. He's not an Israelite, but he married the daughter of Naomi. He's engrafted, you know, he's a, a daughter-in-law of Naomi. And then, but you see, when he acknowledged the God, and then he made a strong commitment, and commitment will let you through, because there will be testings. Hallelujah. Another, the commitment of Esther to save the Jews is one. Esther 4, verse 15 and 16. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai because this is now the time. 
during this time. It, it concerns the annihilation of the Jews. There is a plan to kill all the Jews, just like Holocaust. That's the, origin, the first one. Go gather, but he replied. Yeah. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, his uncle, her uncle. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. You know, prayer and fasting is a manifestation of seriousness to seek the Lord and commitment. Do not eat or drink for three days, one day, night, and day. I and my maid will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. If I perish, I perish. See, this is a commitment. Willing to, you know, willing to sacrifice because hmm, later in... In the preceding, in the coming topics, we will discuss about the measure of love that is needed in the covenant, in the relationship. Let's see Apostle Paul. Let me just get the three examples. You know, Apostle Paul said the commitment of Apostle Paul in serving the Lord is Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's a do or die. It's that's commitment. It's a covenant. Hallelujah. Now, how is your commitment to the Lord? You think of about it, and uh, you know. Uh, let's let's be serious with the Lord. Would you like to make make it more serious and stronger? Now is the time. Pray and talk to the Lord. May the Lord bless you.